How would you improve Headspace? Hey everyone, welcome back to another Exponent Product Management Mock Interview. My name is Kevin, and on today's show, we have Orr, who's a product manager, and we're going to go through a product design, product sense type mock interview. And before we get into that, Orr, do you mind introducing yourself to the audience? Yeah, for sure. Hey, Kevin. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Orr. I'm a product manager at Coinbase. Uh, and prior to Coinbase, I was a product manager at YouTube. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. It's great to have you on the show, Orr. So for today's question, like I mentioned, we're going to be doing a product sense, product design question. Um, it's a pretty open-ended question, and we're going to just kind of test your um, creativity and see how you think. So the question I like to ask is, um, well, first, are you familiar with Headspace? Yeah, it's one of my favorite apps. So the question I like to ask is, how would you improve Headspace? How would you improve Headspace? OK, cool. Uh, and is it OK if I ask just a few clarifying questions? Yes, of course. Awesome. Uh, so maybe the first question is, is it OK if I assume I'm a PM at Headspace, or is there a different company I should be thinking about? Yeah, let's assume that you're a PM at Headspace. OK. And is there a specific reason why we might go about uh, improving it? Was there any kind of constraint or any feedback we got? I'm happy to also make assumptions. Nope, there's nothing from my end. So let's just say this is pretty open-ended and it's up to you. OK, great. Th thanks for clarifying. Uh, do you mind if I just take kind of 30 seconds just to collect my thoughts and think how to approach this question? Feel free. Awesome. And I'm going to be, uh, I think you're, you're already sharing my screen, but you can kind of get a sneak peek into how I'm thinking about it directly in the doc. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, Kevin. So here's just a quick TLDR on how I'm thinking to, to approach this question. Uh, and then, you know, let me know if you want me to add anything or maybe perhaps even deprioritize given uh, the time constraints. Uh, so first, I think it makes sense as a PM at Headspace, I would like to think, you know, what is the broader goal for what Headspace is trying to achieve? And then from that, try and think, you know, what is kind of a bit more specific goal for us to focus on when thinking about how we would go about improving Headspace. Once we define that, perhaps we can think about the target audience of Headspace, perhaps pick a specific niche uh, of, of a user audience, think about their pain points, and finally come up with a bunch of creative solutions uh, for how we'd go about improving it. Does that sound good? Anything else you want me to add here or deprioritize? Nope, this sounds good. Let's go ahead with this. Awesome. OK. So let's start with a broader goal. You know, I think I already mentioned this, but Headspace is one of my uh, favorite apps. Uh, I absolutely love it. it. It changed my life. And, and when I think about the mission uh, Headspace is trying to achieve, don't, don't catch me on the word here. I'm, I'm not working at Headspace, but I think it's something along the lines of improve health and happiness uh, in the world. And so, and happiness in the world. And, and so, when I, when I think about improving uh, you know, improving the app, uh, perhaps one, one way for us to think about it from a product perspective, uh, we could try and maybe just focus on making it easier to use. And by making it easier to use, uh, we would be helping Headspace achieve the mission of improving health and happiness. Um, now, from a business perspective, uh, I think that would ultimately translate into higher engagement within the app by us uh, making it easier to use. So I'm just gonna write here engagement as a direct business goal. Uh, I'm gonna pause here for just a second, uh, see if that makes sense or if you have any questions before I move on uh, to the next section, which is the user segmentation. Yeah, thanks for pausing. Um, how would you define engagement here? Yeah, so in, engagement in with in the context of Headspace is really so you know when we think about Headspace, people come into the app in order to meditate, and so med number of minutes meditated would ultimately translate into a higher engagement within the app. Uh, and so to answer your question specifically, 
uh, perhaps it would be just meditations, or if we were to put a specific uh, KPI here, it would be number of minutes meditated. Does that answer your question? Yep, sounds good. Awesome. All right, so uh, let's think a little bit about the users uh, of, of Headspace. And I can think about, as, as, as a user myself, you know, I can think about many, many different personas finding value within Headspace. You know, that could be, you know, working professionals in, in the tech industry. It could be, uh, you know, teachers or, or parents who just need a moment here to just pause from hectic life. It could be students or even, you know, youngsters who are, you know, going through uh, difficult times uh, that may find benefit in, in, in Headspace. But if I really kind of had to think hard in a way that, would potentially segment all of the users in kind of a messy way in a mutually exclusive way, I can think of three segmentations. The first one is really the skeptics, right? Uh, the skeptics are those that, you know, they never really tried Headspace. Uh, they don't kind of relate to the idea. Perhaps they tried it once, but it didn't resonate with them. Uh, then we also have kind of the rookies, Right, uh, you know, tried it a few times, uh, you know, saw some value, uh, but could not uh, form it into a habit or could not get into the groove of continually, continuously meditating. And I'm just gonna uh, add it here, so we have it in the doc. So the skeptics are kind of like never used it, uh, never used the app, perhaps once, um, don't relate to the idea. And then lastly, we have kind of the diehards, right? Uh, you know, those people are uh, a little bit like me in the sense, at least that's how I see it. You know, they're, they're kind of the, uh, the people who were somewhat enlightened, who somewhat saw, see the direct impact of headspace in their everyday life. Um, and uh, and, uh, and, and they, they, it, there's no question about it. They already formed a habit. Perhaps they're going to retreats, um, and, and they, they would be the ones advocating for for meditations. Uh, so, you know, what, what I want to do here, perhaps now, is maybe uh, take a moment to prioritize the user segment that we should be focusing on. And the way I would like to think about it is perhaps think about a prioritization criteria. Um, Within this context, I think perhaps two criteria comes to mind. That's the TAM, total addressable market, uh, plus uh, the unmet needs. And let me let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, so from a TAM perspective, I'm not necessarily thinking about the entire universe. I'm thinking about the users who are actually using Headspace today, because the goal here is to make it easier to use for the existing users. We want to improve headspace. Um, in, in this context, I think rookies are probably the highest segment that we have here. Uh, in addition to that, in terms of unmet needs, what I mean by that, uh, I'm kind of thinking, what is the segment with the highest friction? And so the diehards are already, you know, they're, they're seeing the benefits. The skeptics, you could argue they have a lot of friction, but they may somewhat not even have headspace or so they're a bit upper up here in the funnel. And so in terms of making it easier to use, I would like to focus on, on the rookies. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it sounds like um, you're targeting people who are aware of Headspace, but they, we want to kind of help them see the value a little bit more so they can become diehards. Exactly, precisely. Yep, sounds good. Awesome. So. Let's double click on rookies. And perhaps this is one of my favorite uh, moments as a PM, uh, I try to kind of emphasize uh, emph emphasize with the user and, and really think hard, what is their pain points? So perhaps give me uh, just a few moments here just to collect my thoughts. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, okay, so so I've listed a few of them. You can already kind of get a sneak peek into how I'm thinking about it. But really, in high level, I'm thinking about it just like a funnel, right? So in terms of pain points, we have the kind of pre-meditation, during meditation, and post-meditation. 
Uh, and uh, obviously you, you could think of many, many other pain points, but I think those are the, the, the biggest ones that comes to mind at the moment. Uh, Pre-meditation, I think the biggest pain point as someone who <clears throat> you know, is just getting into this space uh, is ready to remember to, to meditate. You know, we're, we're so busy, we get caught up with their day-to-day life, forming a, a, a habit is, is a really hard thing. There's many, many books about it. So that's one big pain point. The second pain point is for those who actually remember to meditate and they take the effort to do it, while you're meditating, perhaps one of the biggest pain points, at least personally that I found, is to concentrate. You know, you, your mind is kind of chasing with thoughts. Sometimes there's background noises that kind of makes you wonder if you have family, you may have kids knocking on your door and really the list goes on. So how can we help uh, uh, those rookies concentrate better? And then lastly, uh, I think after you meditate, Sometimes, especially if you're a rookie or if you're someone who's, who haven't meditated a lot, it's, it's somewhat difficult to see the direct impact meditation has in our day-to-day -day life. You know, in, in many ways, uh, you know, we're very reactive and emotional to a lot of things that are happening to us. But as we meditate in, in a consistent way, we can become more conscious and mindful and steer our, our energy towards the things that really matter. And when, when you can do that, when can you, you can be conscious of it, you can really see the impact of meditation, but when you don't, it's much harder. So those are three pain points. Again, uh, I, I think it makes sense to have a prioritization criteria. So let's think about the, uh, the, the criteria here and what makes most sense for us. So perhaps I'm thinking of two criteria uh, one is how you know, acute the problem is, and perhaps uh, what is the frequency, right? So essentially like the depth and breadth, right? Like how, how, how challenging that problem is and how often does it happen? Uh, and just because of conscious of time, you know, I'm just gonna kind of look at those pain points and try and take a stab at it. But definitely, you know, keep me honest here if, if you feel otherwise. I think just looking at it, I think the upper funnel is probably the, the, the broadest in terms of frequency. And so everyone has some issues or some challenges with you know, remembering to, to meditate. Uh, and ultimately, if you're not accustomed to making it a habit, this is a big problem for you because you may not find the time, you may not find the energy to, to, to go ahead and meditate. So I think I would like to focus on the pain point of forgetting to meditate slash forming it a ha as a habit uh, uh, in order to improve headspace. I'm going to pause here and see if that's okay or if you have any questions. Yeah, I think this makes sense. If people are rookies and they're not even remembering to meditate, they're not going to be able to even see the other two pain points. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to see how you would tackle this. Awesome, awesome, cool. So uh, let's move on into a few, let's try and think about a few creative solutions. I'm gonna try and be mindful of, you know, the kind of long-term versus short-term uh, short effort, as well as engineering requirements and, uh, and design requirements we might have to be uh, uh, aware while prioritizing the solution. So I'll try and give kind of a, a, a breadth of, of different options here. Give me maybe like 10 or 20 seconds just to brainstorm a few ideas if that's okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, thank you, Kevin, uh, for bearing with me. Uh, so <clears throat> I can think of three ideas here. Let me kind of walk you through, uh, 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 explain what each one of them means, and then we can go through a quick prioritization exercise to really conclude how we should go about improving, improving the app. First, I can think of reminders, right? Uh, um, <clears throat> reminders can be many, many different things, and so it's a pretty big bucket here. For example, we could have you know, a calendar integration with Google or with Apple or whatever your calendar, your, your, your default calendar is that would you know, remind you to, to meditate. Um, you could also potentially have like physical stickers. Headspace is a subscription-based app. And so when someone subscribes to the app you know, and they pay, I think, $100 a year or something like that, a Headspace could actually send them a few cool stickers uh, that they could kind of 
post put around maybe in the bathroom, maybe on, on the laptop, maybe on the screen. And that could be a, a kind of a physical reminder that they should be meditating. And then uh, lastly, we could also, similar to calendar integration, we could do like app notifications. So, uh, you know, very straightforward. So, so that's on the reminders uh, idea. On, to move on, on this, this, the, the second idea is really the, the support group. And what I'm thinking here is, you know, it's so, as, as a father, you know, it's so much easier to neglect myself. Uh, whereas with, with, when it comes to my daughter, it's very clear to me if she's not feeling well, I'm going to take her to the doctor. It's very clear to me that, I, that she should be eating healthy yet I find myself eating in front of the computer in, in, in front of meetings. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is when you have a support group and, and you create this rapport with someone, it's much uh, more difficult to disappoint them than disappoint yourself. And so creating this support group where you can have you know, live meetings, uh, perhaps you can have reflection meetings, um, perhaps you can have this like weekly, you know, weekly cadence, right? Where you meet and, and it will be just so much harder to disappoint them than, than others uh, by creating this habit. And then lastly, I'm thinking some sort of a scoreboard, leaderboard with friends, uh, you know, end of day, we're human beings and we naturally tend to be competitive in, in our space. Uh, and so how can we take that competitiveness and turn it into our advantage. And so perhaps we can have some badge system where we're ranking people and we're incentivizing people to form it into a habit and do more of it. Perhaps we could also do reminders uh, to inform when your friends kind of were able to increase their rank in their, in their leaderboard. Um, so th those are just three kind of three main ideas I'm thinking about now. Perhaps, and I know we're almost coming at time, so I'll try to be uh, quick here. Perhaps let's take a moment to prioritize the different options and see what makes most sense from a practical kind of down to earth uh, perspective. And so the two uh, prioritization criteria that, that comes to mind here is really, you know, LOE or level of effort and impact in terms of when I say impact, I'm gonna go back into you know, the, the product and business goals and perhaps what's gonna help me increase engagement the most or help people meditate more. Uh, and so, you know, usually what I would do here, I would probably just like score uh, each one of them into like low, medium and high, or perhaps give it like an actual score from zero to 10. But just because we're, we're up in time, I'm just gonna take a stab <clears throat> at what makes most sense given those two prioritization criteria. And I would love for you to keep me honest here. Uh, and I think just from, in terms of level of effort, reminders seems like fairly low, uh, like a calendar integration should be pretty straightforward. App notification should be uh, pretty easy and creating physical stickers, again, pretty straightforward. Uh, in terms of impact, I think that could actually uh, do quite a, a, a tremendous uh, um, uh, improvement in terms of reminding people where to meditate. But obviously, I don't. I, I want. I want. I want to be pretty much assumptionless, and so I would advocate for starting off with some sort of an experiment uh, for reminders and validate, you know, th these assumptions further. So, just to summarize here, you know, uh, Kevin, you asked me how would I go about to improve Headspace. Uh, we, we looked at the mission and we set some business goals uh, for what we would like to achieve. Uh, we prioritize a specific user segment, which are the rookies representing the biggest segment of Headspace. And we looked at their pain points and we concluded that forgetting to meditate or forming a habit is probably the biggest uh, way to improve the app for that segment. And then we, we looked at different solutions and we ultimately prioritized creating reminders for that or enabling the ability uh, to set reminders for, for meditation. So I'll pause here and see if you have any questions for me. Yeah, I think if I were to put myself in the shoes of a rookie, these are all great solutions. Um, what are some reasons why you didn't pick the support group or the scoreboard? Yeah, that's a great question. I think primarily uh, because it probably requires more thought 
you know, uh, like thinking and, and also design. For example, live meetings would require us to not only curate different groups uh, and individuals, perhaps there's time zone uh, challenges here, perhaps there's number of people who may need to opt in to these type of, of groups. Also, <clears throat> depending on our ability, we may have to we may have to decide to create the technology behind the live meetings or perhaps outsource it uh, or partner with you know Google Meet or, or Zoom. That may be costly as well. So it just seemed like a higher effort, uh, not necessarily suggesting that it's lower impact. Uh, and so in, in some regard, I did have a bit of a bias for action and a bias for lower effort uh, uh, solutions. But that's not to say uh, the other two should not be uh, ex further explored. Got it. Um, great. So um, definitely great solutions. And I really think that your pain points highlighted some real pain points that rookies have when it comes to meditating. So overall, this was a really solid answer. Um, thanks, Or, for your, your time on today's mock interview. I'll definitely give you some feedback on my end. Um, and also afterwards, I'd love it if you can give some feedback also. So yeah. some things I've written down was that you, your pain points and your solutions were very creative and uh, very spot on for someone who's a rookie. Like I said, if I were to put myself in the shoes of a rookie, these are um, mutually exclusive pain points that you picked out. And they were, they were also very um ones that i i agree with the, the intuition that you gave you also did a great job of pausing to give me the space to ask clarifying questions um so that's uh it shows that you have good communication skills i also saw that you know like when i asked you some questions you you generally show that you were excited about the problem and that really helps to bring this positive energy to an interview where you know as an interviewer maybe i'm just going about my day at work and then randomly i have to come and interview someone for a job and um, it might not be the most exciting thing, but you just being able to bring your, your excitement for Headspace as an app definitely um, is very positive for an interview. So that's very good. And you also did a really good job of prioritizing at each step. So thinking about which user, which pain point, which solution, you gave a really good um, prioritization into which one you would pick. So um, that's better than just kind of hand wavy like, oh, you know, I would pick this because of my intuition. Um, I think the one thing that I would mention is that I think at the very end when I asked what you, why you, you, you might not have picked the support groups and scoreboard, um, and you spoke about the effort, that's, that's definitely true. Um, I would probably also spend some time and talk about how um, some of the difficulties around building a two-sided marketplace, right? If you have support groups or if you have a scoreboard, um, definitely need, need that sort of two-sided uh, group users to come. Um, and be like maybe the supporter or maybe um, building that community also takes a lot of effort. Um, all, all in all, great answer. And I'm wondering if you might have any self-feedback or any advice that you might want to give the audience. Yeah, thanks a lot, Kevin, uh, for, for the feedback. Uh, plus one on, on the improvement side, uh, should have definitely uh, be more conscious of that. Perhaps I would also add I think in the beginning, you, you asked me to clarify the engagement side of things. So I think it's really important not to assume engagement is defined because really the definition of engagement is, is dynamic depending on the situation, depending on the app. Uh, so perhaps I could have done a better job articulating that. Um, I think also in terms of the user profile, I could have perhaps done a little bit a better job here because I did talk about addressable market, but if you if I really want to be critical with myself, the bigger addressable market are those that are not using Headspace at all. So perhaps I could have chose that um, as well if I'm, if I'm putting that as a prioritization criteria. But yeah, overall, this was fun. Uh, great conversation with you. And um, I hope maybe we can do it again sometime. Of course. And I know that you don't know this, but I remember once I did watch a talk by... Um, I think his name, he, he's a co-founder of Amplitude, which is a, an analytics app that a lot of companies use to track metrics and behavior from users. I think one of their customers is Calm, which is a competitor to Headspace. And if I remember correctly, um, the success story that I'd heard from the co-founder of Amplitude is that they discovered that if they have reminders for users to meditate, 
this would increase the likelihood that the user would have that aha moment of, hey, like this is a valuable product. So um, I know that that's something that you did not know before going into today's mock interview, um, but I just thought I'd bring that up because it aligns with the ultimate solution that you landed on. So maybe Super it's a coincidence, cool. maybe uh, you have uh, very good intuition there. Um, but all in all, great answer. And for the audience, for the viewers watching at home, good luck with your upcoming PM interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.